Okay, now that we have our video and our OMF slash AAF files exported from Final Cut Pro, we're going to come into uh, Pro Tools now, and we're going to actually start our uh, setting up our session and Pro Tools for um, our um, audio post production. Uh, what we're going to do now here is go into Pro Tools, set up a new session. You do it at 48 kilohertz, 24 bit depth, and we're going to hit OK. Come in here, I'm going to save it to an external hard drive. This way it takes some of the load off of my uh, onboard hard drive, and that way my onboard hard drive does not have to work as hard. And I'm just going to save it right here to my external hard drive as tu tu tutorial. And... Oops, added extra T. There we go, save. Bam. Uh, there we go. We're going to delete. Okay. Delete, thank you. And we are going into uh, our first. You could hit uh, Command Two on your numeric keypad in order to pull this up, but I'm on a laptop, don't have a numeric keypad. So you could go to Setup Session, and we're going to change our session start time to 55 minutes. And it's already there, so that's good. Our video was at 24 frames per second, so we're going to. That's good. It's there. We're going to leave that there. Feet plus frames. 24, leave that. Uh, time code 2, you don't need to change this, but uh, we'll just make it correspond with whatever your video is. If it's at 2997, change it to 2997. Um, so, uh, right here, close out of that. Everything's set up good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to import our video. Um, come here, import file, import video. And navigate to where you you have sa uh, saved your video from your export of uh, Final Cut Pro. Uh, ours is Ryan's right here. Sample two. Hit open. And we're just going to put at session start. That's perfectly fine. Um, import audio from file. You can have that checked if you have exported your uh, uh, audio with it as well. But there was no audio with this video. And we're going to hit OK. It opened automatically. Opens up your um, video window we're gonna close out of that for now and we're all gonna go back up to file import session data uh, to import our OMF slash AAF files uh, it's, it, yes they are audio files that are incorporated in there but they're not just audio files there's a bunch of data that's also incorporated in them so that's why you have to go to session data and we come up here session data and you navigate to where you saved it your OMF or AAF file. Uh, I'm going to import the AAF file. Hit open. And you may need to change this in the track offset options. You may need to change that to time code. Um, and we're going to maintain absolute time code values. And we're going to come down here. You want to do new tracks as well. It's the defaults to new tracks, but yours uh, may not. And go ahead and click OK. Okay, we're just going to hit, no, nope, don't want to report on that. And it's just rendering the video, the audio that it just imported. Uh, right now, you see that it imported all of our audio that we had in uh, Final Cut Pro in the exact order and the, the exact um, way we had, our, had it in Final Cut Pro. The, the, everything's in, in place, the same spot we had it. Uh, if we come up here to our time code, uh, we'll come up here and enter in 59 minutes and 58 seconds. Hit enter. Puts our timeline right there. We're going to zoom in on our audio. And there you have it. Shows our uh, audio right there at 59.58. That, that's our audio to bleep. So there you go. Zoom back out. And we're now what we're going to do is now we need to get the video in sync with that. Uh, so what we're going to do in order to do that, we are going to our video. You're going to go with the selector tool. And first we have to open up our video uh, window so we can actually see what we're scrubbing. And go here back to with the selector um, tool. Hit control so you can scrub. Click on the video segment. And we are going to scrub all the way up until we see the two come in. Uh, first, boom, oh, too far. And, oh, too far again. Just nudge. 
I'm on a trackpad, not a mouse, so it is acting screwy with me. There we go. Now let go of the mouse. Boom. Your cursor stays there. And um, if your cursor, if you did not select your video track to begin with, your cursor won't be there. And, but how you can get your cursor down to your video track is you hit your colon, uh, that's just under your P on the keyboard, hit the colon, and it will move your cursor down to your um, video track. Now, since you have your cursor on your video track, uh, what we're going to do now is hit Command, comma for Mac users, and that inserts a sync point. And, uh, or what you can also do is you can go to Region, Identify Sync Point, and it puts the sync point in there. Uh, the sync point we're going to use in order to um, get it lined up perfectly with our at 5958. And what we're going to do to how to do that is now we're going to put our Pro Tools into spot mode right here in the upper left hand corner. Click on spot. And now we're going to with the grabber tool click on our video segment. Click on it. Boom. It pops up this window the spot dialog window and in the sync point we are going to enter in 59 minutes and 58 seconds. Hit OK and voila. There is our video. Our video is right there. We're going to come here to our timeline and uh, to our counter. Enter in 59, 58. Hit Enter and Bowser's. Um, it did not, okay, it's a little bit off. Let's see where our sync point is. Okay, it got moved somehow since I'm using a trackpad. Yeah, they got moved. And we're going to put in 5958. Hit enter. Okay, still. Let's see, 5958. Okay, now it's in sync. Okay, so first time it got moved just because I'm on a trackpad and when I lift it off my finger, it didn't keep it there. And uh, we're going to close out of that. See, everything's in sync. And uh, we're going to zoom back in. Open up our video window again. And this way, well, I'll put it a little bit before, boom, we're going to hit play, boom, two pop, and the two pop uh, go at the exact same time. And it should do the same for our tail pop at the end of our movie. We'll click right here, we'll play that, boom, there you go, it comes in with the, do with the white dot and uh, the two pop right away. All right, now what we're gonna do is, we're actually, let's say you're one man army, you're working on this film, uh, you either filmed it yourself or a buddy of yours filmed it, and he wants you to do the audio for it as well, or you wanna do your own audio. Um, what you do, you're gonna need to create a, base, a basic template for your audio. Let's say you're gonna even, you don't wanna use any of the production audio that we imported here. Let's say it's just horrendous, it's horrible, it's unusable. Uh, what we're going to do is, you're going to do uh, record all the dialogue, re-record it in ADR. Um, then you're also going to create your own foley, and then you're also going to create your own background noises, your own sound effects through sound design. Uh, and uh, let's say you're even going to create your own movie, uh, your music, your own music tracks, your own soundtrack to it. Uh, you're going so what? How we're going to do that is, you need a template first. So we're going to go hit Control or Command Shift N and we're gonna add in four new mono audio tracks and this template that we're gonna create it does correspond to um, the, the the professional standards uh, with the color uh, scheme it, that we're gonna make and, and so that way um, when let's say the, the reason why you put them in certain colors is due to if you they does get sent off to a another facility for it to do let's say another facilities um, doing the whole mix down of it and uh, but and some other departments did dialogue one department did the music another did the um, 
sound effects. They all have to correspond in color, so that way when it gets down to final mix, they know they don't have to play the track in order to find out what it is. They just have to look at the color of the track and they know what uh, what type of fo uh, what type of track it is. Uh, they either whether it's dialogue, foley, sound effects, or music. And now what we're going to do is name this first track D underscore one for dialogue one, and we're going to do D underscore two for dialogue two. This next track is going to be our first Foley track, and we do F underscore cloth, and for cloth noises, let's say somebody's moving around, they're wearing jeans, and you want to get the ruffle of the jeans in there. And next one, F underscore steps for footsteps and such, and hit enter, select the two dialogue tracks, double click on the color, and we're going to change this to orange. The, now we'll select the two Foley tracks, and we're going to make those yellow. And now we're going to create two more mono tracks, Shift, Command, N for Mac users, and two more mono tracks. And you may hear my fan kicking on here, it's on a laptop, and uh, I'm, not, I'm using the onboard microphone. I'm not hooked up to my interface, so I'm not using my uh, interface preamp and mic. So the sound quality may be horrible on this. Yes, it's yeah, an oxymoron, me being an audio guy. But uh, here we are going to go here, double click on it. We're going to name this scale underscore A. Now this one, scale underscore B. These are going to be your skeleton tracks for your, um, the, so you can spot your backgrounds that need to go in. Uh, that way you have a guideline of, okay, let's say, I, okay, I saw a scene change here. So this background needs to go from here to, to the next scene. And then from the next scene to the next, uh, to the, so that way you have your skeleton tracks. So and they need to overlap by uh, a couple frames or a frame, whether it's an, it, it, like a position um, change or a, scene, or a full scene change. And we're going to color code these and green. And now what we're going to do is create six stereo tracks, and these are going to be our background um, noises. And you know, for uh, putting in, why so many? Uh, because you may, uh, more than likely, you're going to want to layer them in order to get the uh, just the the right sounding sound for that background noise uh, to make it sound perfect. And we're going to come in here double click we're gonna name this a underscore one dash two go to the next one a underscore three dash four next track a underscore five dash six go to your next track b underscore 1 dash 2, next one, B underscore whoop, 4 or 3 dash 4, next one, B underscore 5 dash 6. Hit enter, bam, there we go. Now we're going to select all of these tracks and we're going to name those or color code those green as well. Uh, so color scheme is all the same. Now what we're going to do is create two mono tracks. These are going to be uh, backgrounds as well. Sometimes you may want to add in a layer, background layer that is not that doesn't need to be stereo. So mono mono will do. So we're just going to create two um, just so we have one of each. And come in here. We're going to name this. A underscore seven. Go to the next one. The name this B underscore seven. Hit enter. We're gonna move this A. Oh, first before I do that, make these green, and we will now move the A up right there in order. And now we're gonna create our uh, three mono 
tracks for our small sound effects. And ooh, get these moved down. There we go. And double click S underscore one. S underscore two and S underscore three. These are going to be light blue. And now what we're gonna now we're gonna enter in our large sound effects. Normally these would be in 5.1 if it was a 5.1 mix, but this, we're, yeah, this is just a stereo mix. So we're going to do um, do uh, just two tracks for left and right, and they're gonna be mono. And these are going to be dark blue, so the color is going to stay the same. And we're going to name this LFX underscore left. LFX underscore right. There we go. Now what we're going to do is come in here, create a stereo track. And leave that dark blue because this is going to be our large sound effects comp uh, track, a composition track. And boom, there we go. And now we're going to create our final three tracks, of which are going to be all stereo, and these are going to be for music, adding in your soundtrack. And hit Control, uh, Shift, Command, N, three, change them to stereo, Enter, and this. We're going to change to MX underscore one, MX underscore two, and this final one, MX underscore com. And what this, uh, you may need more or less, uh, you may not need so many of some of these tracks, you may need more of some. Um, but this is just a basic template to get you started and you can always add or remove as you go uh, but this is a pretty good template oh and for the music tracks we are going to change those to red and but yes this is a good template um, and, and so on and you can always if you're not going to use any of the production sound and you're going to replace everything um, what you would you could always leave it there as a guide track, so that way you know um, what, like let's say, pants ruffling or some some things that you may have slipped your mind while you're viewing the video and spotting your sound effects and everything where sounds need to go. Uh, you just may have missed something there, and uh, if you want to get everything in there but just make it sound better, uh, this is a good way to keep the guide track there. And uh, well, in our next video, what we're going to do is start spotting um, our backgrounds and our sound effects. And uh, so stay tuned and see you, uh, see you next video.